I went to go see M. Night Shyamalan's new movie, Old, and here is what I thought about it. Let's do this. Hey folks, it's T. Blake Braddy here. I'm doing another movie review, just my first impressions of the new M. Night Shyamalan movie, which I went to go see on my birthday. And I didn't even realize the irony of it until I told everybody what I was going to go see. But enough about that. Let's get to the movie. What did I think about old... Well, I have a complicated history with M. Night Shyamalan, as I imagine that most of you do. After Sixth Sense, I mean, there's really just no way to compare to that, but you gotta give it to M. Night for continuing to try. He's mostly done ambitious projects, and they don't always work, but sometimes they do. I thought The Visit was one of the best horror movies I'd seen all of last decade. But then, you know, Split was great, and then you had Glass, and now you have Old. So, was he able to recapture the magic of the mid-teens, 20-teens, or did it fall off? Unfortunately, I think that this was a miss on Mr. Shyamalan's part. There are things that I really dug about the movie. The premise is really neat, and it's fairly simple. People go to a beach resort and end up on a private beach where they start aging it at an exponential rate, it feels like. And the movie is about them trying to figure out, A, why it's happening, and B, how to get off the beach. So, why doesn't the movie work? Well, it has to do, and I think my wife put it uh, best when she talked about the script. It's all about the script. The writing was really strange, and the acting was really stiff. And... I know that if you've seen, let's say, The Happening, you know that uh, movies that M. Night does, the, the, the direction isn't always the best. I mean, I'm thinking of, you know, Mark Wahlberg doing his uh, Mark wahlberg in that movie. And I think this kind of parallels that. There's a lot of really still to dialogue. Um, and the reason the dialogue is so bad in this movie is that it really is just exposition. People make huge leaps in logic in this film and then pass it off as trying to explain something to, something to other people. Because it would be really difficult to figure out that you're aging really quickly and to come up with a super quick reason for why. And they seem to get to that answer extremely quickly. That it's the beach and the rocks that are doing it. And uh, I don't know that that works. And then the... the, the the other reason why the movie doesn't really work for me is that they just don't really take the ideas to their logical conclusions. There are a few great ideas in here. For example, uh, when characters get cut, they immediately scar up. Or if their bones break, uh, they immediately set, which we'll get to that in a moment. But... They don't take these few ideas and really take them to maturation. They don't take them to the point where they actually matter, especially with the cuts. That doesn't really go anywhere. But, um, and the pregnancy, spoiler alert, doesn't really, it happens so quickly and so oddly that... I mean, and that's the other problem is that everything has to happen quickly. There is no other option because they're all aging quickly. And so everything is a surprise. And so if everything is a surprise, nothing is. And it doesn't really work because we get this scene where these children who were literally six and four years old or whatever, a few scenes before are now having a child and there's a throwaway line that they... Their brains are changing too, but it just feels really strange for you to see these characters grow up so fast and then have a child that that soon. Um, so it just doesn't doesn't come together. And the ending with its you know M Night twist, the twist is either really obvious or really not good. And this is a not good twist. Um, I just don't think the movie sticks the way that it should. That said, my favorite part of the movie, my favorite scene has to be the 
the bone breaking tunnel monster death. Um, it's weird to take pleasure in that scene because it's about someone with a calcium deficiency, but it's grotesque and gruesome and kind of everything I wanted in this movie. I wanted more of the body horror that the movie kind of promises in the beginning. When you think about cuts, I thought that there would, we'd go more places with that. And maybe the bone break is the, the bone breaking scene is kind of the logical conclusion of the cuts because it's like, oh, the bone sets immediately, just like the car scars, uh, the cut scar up. But that's, that's my favorite. I, I just thought that was really creepy and weird. And I wanted more of that. I wanted this movie to feel like The Ruins meets an M. Night movie uh, because The Ruins was not a good movie either, but the book was amazing. And so we didn't get that, but that scene was great. I also liked the setup. I kind of dug the stakes of the movie. We get uh, an indication early on that the marriage isn't working out and this is kind of a either a last hurrah or like a last ditch effort to save this family. I loved all of that, but that also doesn't really get explored in the tension of the movie. It just, there's so many threads here that are just left there and aren't tied up in any meaningful way. And it comes off as silly. And I hate to say that because there are movies that M. Night has done that I love more than most movies. Unbreakable and Signs are two of my favorite movies of all time. And... I want that every time. Every time I go to see one of this guy's movies, I don't root for the guy to fail. I thought that the premise for, say, Lady in the Water was great, and I didn't like the follow-through, and the same for The Village. The Village was amazing for me until the twist, and so I just want him to make great movies. It reminds me of The Ruins, and it also feels like it was a little bit influenced by Darren Aronofsky's mother. There is a sense of it sort of being a, a sort of working allegory that I, I think that it could have gone places there too um, because M. Night Shyamalan talked in depth about this being about sort of a personal journey with him and his father who's suffering, suffering from dementia. And I think that a very personal story would have worked. This didn't feel as personal. Um, as I think he wanted it to, and it just suffers from that. But could this movie have a sequel? No. It could not have a sequel. I don't think it, I think that a series would work. Um, one of the things they talk about on the rewatchables is could this be made into a 10 episode Netflix series? And I feel like this movie. I don't want everything to turn into a TV show, but I feel like this movie would work way better as a TV show because you could actually explore the, like each episode could be an hour and you did 24 episodes or even 12 hours, 12 episodes and you cover two hours in a day. I think that would work like do it like 24. That would be an amazing way to explore all of the ideas here, but trying to, convey this really complex idea and have characters figure it out basically in like in real time in the movie not in real time but have them discover all these things really quickly and also try to solve it and also try to save themselves and ultimately fail that's a really difficult ask of any movie and i just this it doesn't pull it off so maybe a tv series would have worked better a mini series of some sort so those are my thoughts about M. Night Shyamalan's old. Let me know what you think down in the comments. Subscribe to the channel, hit the bell, all that stuff. And we'll see you next time on First Impressions. I'm T. Blake Braddy. Thanks for watching. Now go watch some more movies.